So look, let's get into this motherfucker. How'd you get the name Lil Jack? <laughs> Kill him, we kill him, I let loose some shots and leave burns on the ceiling I'm about to go nuts and you into a victim Mentally destroy my trigger finger bitch and they say I'm insane I'm insane, I'm in love with cocaine, but bulletproof my shit jacket Bitch mess in the game, I be losing my mind I can't wait to with grandma, go on your close range and play. get into music I mean my first I've been writing I've been writing songs since the beginning since I was like 11 years old you know but at the same time I took it serious uh had to been around it at that time a couple years later I remember um, my first experience that made me want to write I was riding to school with at the time my mom's boyfriend and you know that was in the days where DJ Spanish Fly, he was dropping his mixtape by him. You had A Bomb and MJT doing the underground thing. And he jumped in the car, you know, and he, on, he about to take me to school. He playing this, I think it was lyrics of a pimp, A Bomb and MJT. You know what I'm saying? He vibing to it. He loving this shit. And as a youngster, I'm like, shit, yeah, you know, I want to be able to make a motherfucker feel like that off of words, because he's saying every word that they say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They feeling this shit, though. Uh, on the ride home from school, I'm like, let me get that tape. You know what I'm saying? He give it to me. I take it in my room. You know what I'm saying? I stood it. They bar format and shit. Believe it or not, I wrote that whole song down just like so it. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to say what they say to the point where I start writing my own shit. You know, I was taking my shit to him. He like, this shit bumping. You know, you wrote this, do another one. Yeah, so I did give it to his home, but I put it on tape. He like, do another one, do another one. So it kept me going. That's what made me want to do it though. The vibe, you know what I'm saying? I felt that he was getting of what they were saying. Okay, the, the name, the name, it's a lot of things behind the name. You know what I'm saying? First off, as a youngster, you know, uh, I was intrigued by Charles Manson, period. His court cases, his, you know what I'm saying? On screen, personality, all this shit. Not to the point where, you know, I would even think that we name our group after it. But, you know, the as a group, we start adding people. We started the group in 1992. You know what I'm saying? I was the founder of the group. Okay. Everybody came through. You know, it was mostly, we was all friends, but we shared an interest, which was music. You know what I'm saying? But the music brought us together. It was always deeper than music. You know what I'm saying? We was a family. But we was on some man's and shit. So we took the name and made the acronym. We stood for many artists networking. Securing one name, and that name is family. You know what I'm saying? So, and at the same time, we was, it was that Charles Manson mentality. You know, we was we was on. We started listening to the interviews, and that shit was it's more too hard. So, on some Manson family shit, we felt like that's us. We didn't come together on that Manson family shit, but it grew into that. So we were like, what was better? I met one member of the Manson family, John Doe. He was rapping outside the group with another guy, and it was kind of themselves, the man's and family. So I'm like, this was up. I took a man, like, y'all come on with us. You feel what I'm saying? And it grew. But it's from the time, though, even to this day. So it's like the boys, you know, they said it started like that. First members of the man's and family was myself, uh, Lil Cuckoo. And I say, then we hooked up with John Doe, Young Coke. And it was Pony Man, original number uh, Freaky Reese, 228, Meg Lizzo, you know, it was a whole bunch of us from the beginning. And then it just spread it out. A lot of them dudes you probably, you know, are familiar with, but those are, those are the four fathers of the man from family. All right, so. Look, oh, okay, okay. You want to talk yeah, about that? Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm open for the discussion. I'm trying not to time travel. You feel me? I'm trying to go linear with no, the it's years. All good. Okay. It's all good. Now it's better to know the history. You know what I'm saying? Before you can, so you can know where you at. A lot of people just getting into it like this shit bumping. 
they don't know where it came from. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing this shit like a face since the group started in 92. You feel what I'm saying? But this 2014, a lot of people just getting turned on to this. they like, man, look, Jay Popper, but it's, it's many more. It's many artists networking. You feel what I'm saying? So you got to hear the history so you know where you at. I mean, in 96, we was, by 90, okay, if we don't take it like that, by 92, 92 to 96, we went from being friends that's rap to a street established group for as rappers. Because by 96, we was on the streets and in the stores with our first product, which was a man's family, grandma's ground. We met Macy, though, who was a producer. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, he was like, I did with the PHT, I already knew who we were. You know, that's really where we put the Manson family on the rap standpoint. Because at first we was just friends and, you know what I'm saying, some Manson shit. But that's when we put it into a rap school. But remember, we always rappers, so when we came along with the with the foundation, a home for us, we all went to it. Of course, Psycho Child was our first producer. You know what I'm saying? He's still Manson family to this day. But we were doing things in the hood, but like I said, the ratio came along and gave us a little more establishment. So we went on. We started doing cassettes. We dropped... Uh, Grandma the Graham, 96. I followed up my uh, solo project, Hallucination. You know, and uh, from there the story goes on. Let you ask the question that you down. I mean, really, I listen to everything. I started off, you know what I'm saying, listening to uh, A.D. Rock. Of course, our old, old school rap. You know what I'm saying? Today is June 16, 2014, Tupac's birthday. Uh, of course, three six mafia. You know what I'm saying? I grew up out there. No doubt, those were my motivators. A lot of people used to say, "Y'all sound like them." You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's it's a it's a regional thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just like now, most kids and girls in this division sound like this. It wasn't like nothing more, nothing less. It was just a regional thing. You know, uh, Lord influence. You know, everybody know he played a big part on on everything I do. So those were my inspirational rappers. But on, on the up and up, like I said, it's the head thing. But my ears are on the underground. Listen to all underground music. I don't care who it is. I don't care what you're working with. You know what I'm saying? If I can get my hands on it and my ears to it, I'm listening to it. So that's what I'm on. All right. So look, for a side question, this is not on my list. What year, right. did, what year did you stop fucking with the radio? Did I stop fucking with the radio? Did you stop? Were you, you was like, man, I'm done with it. to the radio. Yes. Okay, we're going we're gonna to jump a, a long way out there. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, back, question. we're going to jump out there. I say uh, around, honestly, 2008. I, I went to the penitentiary 2008. I came home in 2011. I came home since then. I really ain't heard nothing. You know, that I was just on the radio. That from 2011, that was the last time I just really like. But my area, Memphis Radio, is all right. I ain't going to knock Memphis Radio because we don't get what everybody else gets. You know what I'm saying? I've been to different cities, different states. I see what that radio jam like. Memphis radio, okay. They play a lot of local music. They support their area. You know what I'm saying? I, can't, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Memphis radio. Cause they all right. So let's talk about the resurgence. You said 2008, you got locked up. 2011, right. you're out. Lil Jack has to restart. Talk about right. the resurgence and how the new fans, you know, oh, Lil Jack, Lil Jack. Talk about that, man. Okay. Okay, from... Like I say, 2008 to 2011, a lot of shit had happened. You know what I'm saying? And during that shit, I ended up doing some time going to prison. Came home 2011. You know, when, when I came home, I was introduced to a different fan base. Because I was used to my underground fans. I wasn't used to, like, the worldwide fans. I was introduced to uh, the internet. You know what I'm saying? Social sites, MySpace, whatever. And I started, you know, connecting with the fans on a, on a closer basis. So, you know, they started giving me ideas of what they want. So at the time I came home, I dropped a uh, moment of truth, which I felt like was some of the real shit I ever wrote, you know. Right. But when I dropped it, my fan base was like, I'm going to jack this shit straight, but, you know, what you talking about? So I'm, I got to do research in their head, like, okay, what you asking for? Because you got to remember, the first time I ever wrote my first verse, I gave it to my stepdad that was at the time. He brought it back like this shit was bumping, write another one. So it was all about to approve. You know what I'm saying? I know I can rap, but I'm trying to give these what they want to hear. So I'm trying to see what they want. So 
but they're like, nah, man, we want this shit like this here. We know you got it. You know, we want that nasty shit. You know, so I started giving it to them. So that's what, and I had to reinvent myself because I had to break off. A lot of people wasn't doing what I was doing. The family got back into doing what they was doing. So, you know, the name still hold weight, but at the same time, I want to establish a little check, like on some Michael Jordan shit, you know what I'm saying? So there came the whole I Kid You project, and it was an idea, you know, that came from somebody close to me. They got me the mask, like, we invent yourself. You know what I'm saying? And from that was the birth of I Kid. And, you know, we go on. You know, I couldn't just really give you the lyrics. You know, like I said, it took a lot of took a lot of shit that I went through, and I, right, I right. can't just give it to you like that because I wouldn't even remember. It was crazy, you know what I'm saying? It was simple, but at the same time, I know it was still hard. But the first verse I dropped when I got out, I ain't gonna lie, I came home and C Rock and Macho had came together and got me a verse. It was a Yo Gotti feature, and the song was on the map. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it was for the moment of truth. I got in there and I dropped the verse, you know, and I, I liked the song, but the fans was like, okay, that's cool, but that ain't the jack we want to hear. You know, so I switched it up. But that was the first verse I, I dropped. That I came project, you know, that was after. You know, I got the response from the moment of truth. Talk about Devil's Night and that legendary okay. verse. Fuck you mean I ain't real, nigga. Talk about the birth yeah. of that verse, how you got on the okay. song, everything. Okay, the Devil Night track, if I'm mistaken, that was Wicked Stick, right? Yeah, Wicked Stick. Okay, Wicked Stick. Yeah, you reached out to me. That's the homie, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I do a lot of networking with a lot of with a lot of people. You know, Wicked Stick, he's the homie, he got at me. He got a whole bunch of people, you know, and I wanted to bump out on this verse, so I got on my level. You know, and I took a lot of criticism. That's what I like to do. I, I like to take a lot of criticism in. And then, you know, last year, and respond on on Wix. And that's what I did for that devil's night. You know? It's just it's just it. How did you feel about C Rock being on the same track with you? Nah, it ain't no problem, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no problem. I mean like at the same time, we can seek the home and he called that shot. You know, so I would you know and, and when you listen to that first, C Rock might get offended like he talking about me. Like he did all the time. Sure, I'm saying to shoot fit. But now nah, I wasn't focused on him because I didn't even really know he was going to be on the track. You know, but it wasn't no problems. You know, if, if my guy fucked with him and it's on some business, we didn't have to go to the studio together. And, and like I said, C Rock came up under the same rules I came up under. So it wasn't no problem. And me and him, it's, it's more or less personal. Do you have any pre recorded rituals before you step in? You know what I'm saying? And lay that verse down. Actually, I do. Actually, I do. You know what I'm saying? And you just have to be there. Oh, shit. So it, 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 I mean, you would have to be there. Because to be honest, I separate. It's like I say, when I get this, when I get the mask, you know, I separated who I am from, you know what I'm saying? The, the me from within, it's like a, I, I summon, you know, on the cool, I'm going to keep it real. And everybody around me know that when I step in the booth, we go down. Not even just in the booth, my writing process. You know what I'm saying? I don't listen to my tracks. It's something different. So I do go on the zone. And I do do certain things right before I even say something on that mic. Is if I open it, you know, the booth door, then I got to do it again. When I, if I step out the booth and say something, when I close the door, I got to do it again. You see what I'm saying? And everybody know what drugs I use. Because really, I probably go in there on some good weed to lay my vocals. You know, so it ain't even about what drugs I'm on. But good weed, you know, I go and I go to the old for the good green, period. No drink, no, I don't fuck with no pills. You know, the good green, I'm going to do my thing. But yeah, I do have pre-recording rituals. And I believe in them. Shit, a natural hat. Right. You know, a natural hat. And it's just being real. I ain't been sober since the 90s. So, you know what I'm saying? That would, that would be my drug of choice, a natural high. And they might not answer a lot of questions, but I'm just keeping it real. You know, but I got plenty of part of favors. I like to smoke weed. I smoke weed 24-7. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't care about who heard it and who said what about it. You know, I smoke weed 24-7, smoking as we speak. 
I'm smoking right now, nigga. That's what's up. The toast, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 24 7. So, it would probably be my drug of choice. All right, so hold on. Let me let me back up a bit when you were talking about stepping into the booth and decompartmentalization and being able to separate the two minds. Were you right. referring to the baby face mask? I mean, pretty much. That was the first. That's what started it. And, it, and, it, and it, his name, I, the name, it's, it's the baby face mask. That's what the name everybody gave. But his personal name is Rockabye. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it, and it came, it's the whole IQ process. Like I said, it brought on a whole nother zone, whole nother mind state. So, yeah, that's what these, that's what the rituals bring on. But, and when it's in that Rockabye mode, it goes down. And I love it. You can put my hand shaking, talking about it. For sure. So look, I can't hold this back any longer, man. Let's talk about the I Kill You series. You already uh, shed a, a, some light on that, but what was the main idea of keeping a series and keeping it consistent with the title, same theme? Talk about that. Man, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, my main thing was there was a lot of bullshit out here. And it was as far as music, and it was being marketed as top Top of shit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, lyrically, I kill these niggas. Mentally, physically, however they want to do it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm like, fuck it. I be that kid. I be that kid to kill these rappers, you know what I'm saying? But when I dropped the first, I did this shit, like I say, no pen, no pad, I went in the booth, took this shit on the sixth of the prize, I kill you. And I felt like I lyrically killed these niggas, slaughtered them out of competition, you know what I'm saying? It was in the way. But then, after the smoke cleared, it's like after all the bodies was dropped, some motherfuckers was still wiggling. I'm like, these niggas ain't dead, you know. And some was still speaking out from the from on the ground. They still talking shit. I'm like, these niggas still talking shit. You know what I'm saying? So I kill you niggas again. That's what the kill you two came from. Man, the kill, kill, kill. It's like the three of kill. You know what I'm saying? It's a three of kill. So I mean, how far are you planning to go? Is it just depending on your mood? Not really. You know what I'm saying? It all depends on the fans. If they want it, and you know. So, I Kill You 9 is a possibility. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I get these niggas until there's nothing left. Look, I'm going to ask this question. It's from my homegirl, Il V, who was also on okay. Devil's Night. Okay. Uh, I got to give her props because I did not think of this question, but check me out. Uh, if you could play out any one of your songs, uh, which song would it be? And who would it involve? I mean, a lot of this shit that a lot of people listen to and think is the lyrics. This shit just don't come from, you know, meditating with no pen. Right. You feel me? So a lot of this shit is what it is. But a lot of this shit be misunderstood. I got one song that I feel like a lot of people misunderstood. Might be slipping on, sleeping on. You feel me? And it's, uh, I think, just a Jack 3. An old 38 taped up camel. You know what I'm saying? This song meant a lot to me. I feel like people did it get it people didn't get it you know it's a, it's a storyline to the song if you listen to the song real good to put everything in perspective but if you listen to it, i just give you the key to it second verse first and you'll understand the first verse but if i had a chance to actually like visualize put it in a visual so to say that would be it got black like a lot of people on this so okay. it's a jack three if i'm mistaken the old 38 takes up how what is your favorite track and or favorite album of yours? It's hard to say, you know what I'm saying? I believe some of my favorite shit probably don't release. <laughs> and probably my favorite album, uh, that's hard to say. I just enjoy putting the product out, you know what I'm saying? I feel like the one that the people like the most, because to be honest, I get a lot of fans response on the New Jack City. I like the New Jack City go in. But to be honest, I was locked up at the time, and the company I was with had enough product to keep the fans on their toes, so they put that to junk. I was unhappy with it. I'm like, man, what type of shit is this? But they felt it. They're like, man, we love that shit. So, you know, it, my my personal favorite, what I listen to, uh, it's probably the beef. Yeah. You know, with the horror show EP, I fuck with the beef. But in the car, right now, I probably got the beef. Uh, I got a few, man. I got a few in the car, but that's what I ran to. Huh, man, okay. That's a good question, man.
like, uh, five times I met the Lord, you know, like I said, there was some friction in between the family, the personal man and the family be, like, between the times I was locked up. And I came home 2011, you know, and me and the producer Mayfield, we was going head to head and, you know, in that war, not just a war of words, physical war. So he's like, man, squash the shit, you know. Let's, let's get this money. And he like, I'm going to introduce you to Lord Infamous, and he going to work with you on his leg. I'm like, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I grew up out, listen to Lord Infamous. Cool. So we hit the studio, and we did our first song, which was The Addicts. And, you know, from that point, me and Lord developed our own personal relationship. It wasn't even about music. You know what I'm saying? It just so happened that, like I said, we all rap. So it was like, we, we instantly vibe. That's why it's only one project under Tick Enterprise. That's why we ain't got as many. So we was together on a regular. But we got in the booth when it was requested. Get this song out of y'all, like, fuck it. You know? Yeah. You know, we could have did much more. Now, as far as an untold story, I got many of them. Let me see. When I first met him, you know, he was he was on the level where he was meeting rappers on the regular. So what I was doing just really, it was cool, but, you know, it was shit. So he could never remember my name. He remember me as the dude who came from the penitentiary. <laughs> who got on right here at stroke? You know, and it was, it was, it was bad. Because I'm like, damn, I'm fucking with him, but he can't remember me. You know what I'm saying? But I had, had back surgery. You know what I'm saying? Lord had, had a, at the stroke, he had a cane. I had a cane. He was there, but he ain't like his cane. And I remember that we were sitting there talking with children. But I know he couldn't remember my name for shit. They were, they were kind of physical. I'm like, man, I fucking do that thing. But I know he had strokes. So I give him a cane. And I know he's like, my cane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I give him a cane. I, you know, said a few things to him. Which brought us a whole lot closer. He kept that motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was brand new. I had to get that motherfucker. From that point on, you know, I wasn't just that dude from the pen with the good verse. You know what I'm saying? And that's how he remember me. We sat down and we talked that day. We chopped it up here. You know, good conversation. It always was a good conversation. Ain't nothing but memories, man. Ain't nothing but love. He taught me a whole lot of shit. He came. He bounced back. He went from that point where not remember me to, you know, bouncing around, jumping around. And one time he jumped up in the air and cracked his heels together. You know, and to people who knew him, they you know they're saying a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay, that's my thing with this. You know, at the time, None of us knew, you know, that Little Rick was rapping. And I know if Lord would have knew that he was on it like he is, and as good as he is, he would have took the time out to do with him what he did with me. You know, he gave me a platform to reach out to the fans. He showed me how to get money. You know what I'm saying? He showed me how to be who I'm developing into being. At the same time, I'm a good, I'm a good, you're only as good as your teacher. You know, so showing that I learned a good lesson from a good teacher. I'm going to pay the on and try to do the same thing. And, I mean, I always wanted to deal with him. When I first heard it, I'm like, man, that's some cold shit. And I know he would have been happy to hear it. But I didn't want to be, you know, just be like, I want to I fuck with y'all on this level. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of people in that girl. But they came to me. You know, they're like, hey, we want you to work with us. I'm like, that's even better. You know, and they ain't good hands. And uh, the ritual music, we, we, we're establishing ourselves. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a label. So with them on the roster, you know, ain't nothing but love on both sides. And my thing is to promote them like they need to be promoted, you know what I'm saying, on an underground standpoint. Right. You know, get them a little farther. It's all about that push. And it's just to push them a little farther. You know, they're always welcome to do whatever in the future because I can't get them what others might be able to. I just want to give them that push to be heard. Like I was, you know what I'm saying, I was giving that push. Uh, we, we, we already connected, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, they reached out to me. I've been chopping it up with them. We already connected. We already connected. So it's, it's just really a process after this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, it's cool. We're going to get them, get, get their music to the world. And I heard they interview. They were spoken to be so young. You know, it caught my attention. They nicely grown. They read it. You know, they read it. So I didn't need to just push. I mean, you know, it's pretty much what it is. It's pretty much what it is. You know, it's, you got to think of, you think of seances, you know, and you think of being wherever you be during that seance moment. 
and doing whatever you're doing during this ritual, you know, what's playing? What's playing? You know, everybody got different kind of seance, they might not want to admit it. Some people like they don't want to get into it, but they still do it. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's some gangster shit, or whether it's some pimp shit, whether it's some, some conniving shit, whether it's your daily routine going to work. You know what I'm saying? It's your ritual. Like you say, when I get in the booth, I don't burn candles and shit. Not that type of ritual. But at the same time, when you're doing what you do, what you listen to, what's playing out. So that's how it is, ritual music. You know what I'm saying? And it's just not this horror report shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I'm not saying like that to downplay horror core music because I love it. It's, but it's not just horror core music. When I say ritual music, everybody got their own few rituals. You know, it's up, it's yet to come. But right now, all eyes on the, the horror core ritual style. So that's what kind of music we're getting. For sure. 